you're hoping to improve upon in your next matchup? I think we have to work on our tackling. Uh, you know, our tackling is still not where it needs to be. And, um, you know, we've, we've got to be able to pass the ball a little more effectively, even though Josh had a few nice catches. Uh, you know, our run game didn't pick up toward, till the end, and uh, we need to really pass the ball a little more. Great. Thanks so much, Coach, and congrats on the win. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Noah. Coach Parziali certainly happy with another Boston North win. Uh, I'm sure he hopes that his team can keep it rolling here. Um, it's always been with the Jets that next man up mentality. A guy goes down, next man up. You saw that Angelo Blake wasn't running the ball as much this week because he's still coming back from an ankle injury. Played a lot on defense, played well on defense. But Martinez had a lot of carries. You had uh, Fado who had a, a lot of carries for the Jets. They have so many different guys who aren't necessarily stars, but guys who contribute all the time on this team. It's never going to be one guy for East Boston, especially – Brandon Ortega, their top player, graduated. You knew it wasn't going to be one guy this year. Five different players touched the ball out of the backfield in the first half. They probably ended with maybe six guys. It, it's it's just the focus on move the sticks. We don't need to do it in all one play. They did with Martinez, who scored from, I think, 39 yards out on that game-winning touchdown. But in the second half, they did what they weren't able to do in the first half. Move the sticks, pick up a couple first downs in a row, kill some clock, tire down the defense. That's what East Boston's good at. And one last note about Rivera, that that first play, that first catch you saw in the highlights, that set up their four, first touchdown on fourth down. That was possibly his biggest play of the game. It happened in the fir first quarter. That was a really difficult catch. Huge play. Um, and, and they don't throw the ball a lot, but they had some big first downs when they were third and long, fourth and long. And, and that's big because it gives Russo some more confidence. And it, John Parziali said it, he wants to throw more. Well, I think with this performance by his quarterback, they're going to have a little bit more confidence going forward, especially if Rivera is able to go next week. Yeah, I think his health is probably going to be a big indicator of whether or not they're going to throw a little bit more than they could tonight. Let's take a look at the final stats from this game before we sign off from Sartori Stadium. And first up, it's going to be the O'Brien Tigers. Well, Izabuzua was the man in the second half. 92 yards. He had less than 20 in the first half. Milton finished with 48. Most of those coming in half number one. Jaden Smith, an all-around great player. He had a 46-yard touchdown catch in the first half, 24 yards from Francis. Those came in the second half. Maffeo played well, three for six for 73. He was taken out. Hopefully he'll be okay for next week. Restrepo, one for two from 18 yard, for 18 yards. Let's take a look at the East Boston Jets. Christian Fudo was the guy early on, eight for 43. Martinez is, is the big play guy, and he had two big plays. A catch to give them the lead early on in the second half and in the game-winning score from about 40 yards out. He not only shows up as the team's second-leading rusher, but picked up that nine-yard touchdown catch. And Russo, 6 of 12, 71 yards. It's actually a pretty good stat line for a guy who's not asked to throw the ball all that much. He had some really big first-down completion especially late in the second half. And yeah, Coach Parziali wants to throw him to throw even more, so he better get his arm wound up for the next couple of games. Folks, you want to watch this game again, you can go to our website, www.cityofboston.gov slash game of the week. All the games from this season are up there. You can also follow us on social media. You can go to Facebook, facebook.com slash game of the week Boston. A lot of links, a lot of different videos. Pictures are up there as well. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag Boston G O W. We will be in Brighton next week for another Boston North showdown. But for right now, I'm going to say so long from Sartori Stadium in East Boston here on Game of the Week. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.
Thank you all for coming. My name is Stephanie Seskin. I am the Active Transportation Director in the City's Transportation Department. Um, I am here with a number of wonderful people and colleagues, including our Commissioner of Transportation, Gina Fiendaka, our Chief of Streets, Chris Osgood, um, Director of Policy and Planning, Vineet Gupta, Tracy, Carla, John, <laughs> another Tracy, a lot of people here. Um, so the Blue Bikes Bike Share, as I hope you all know, is public transportation by bike. It's something that we at the city feel very strongly about um, and believe in as a transportation option that is healthy, it's fun, and it's affordable for our residents. Um, we run this program in partnership with our municipalities of Cambridge, Somerville, and Brookline. Um, today we have 240 stations in the system um, and 2,500 bikes. Uh, by sometime in 2019, hopefully earlier than later, we'll have 300 stations and 3,000 bikes across the, the region. Um, that expansion is possible from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, who is here today as well, to help celebrate the new stations that are here in Mattapan. Um, and we also have some new stations in Roslindale and Southern Dorchester that have gone out already. Um, the stations were, thank you. Really though, the applause should be for our residents who helped us as the transportation department find the best locations for bike share in their communities, telling us what locations work well, which ones work a little less well, um, and helping us get this over the finish line. So I want to thank everyone in the Mattapan, Dorchester, and Roslindale communities for believing in us and that we'd eventually bring bike share to your, your part of the city, and we're very excited to be here this morning. Um, so uh, it is my pleasure now to introduce our mayor, Martin J. Walsh. Thank you very much, Stephanie, and I want to um, I want to thank everyone that's here. I want to thank uh, Gina Fandaka, our Commissioner of Transportation, Chief Osgo, Chief of Streets. Um, I want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, there's many different folks from Blue Cross Blue Shield here. Uh, I want to thank the community members who are an integral part of all this. I want to thank the elected officials that are behind me, uh, Representative Russell Holmes, Representative Danny Cullinane, City Councilor Nisha Sabi George, um, for all of their advocacy. Uh, a lot of work is going into um, Mattapan right now, Mattapan Square. Um, the, the legislature was able to get some money for reconfiguration of some of the streets and do studies. Uh, we're in, we're in, the, in, in the midst of the beginning of a master planning process for Mattapan Square and, and helping the businesses out of here. Many of the businesses that you see here have been here for, for decades and we're working to make sure that we can help those communities and help those businesses continue to thrive. The health centers here. I want to thank the Health Center for being with us today. Um, but today, today what we're talking about is biking, uh, environmentally friendly biking. And anyone that looks to your left to see all the people coming from Milton into Boston, and you can see the traffic here, uh, one of the best ways of alternative uh, mode of transportation is bikes. And in May, we launched the Blue Bike Program here in the city of Boston in partnership with Blue Cross Blue Shield. It has been a, a tremendous success uh, throughout the entire city. Every day we see students and visitors and residents and riding blue bikes all over our city. Today we're excited to reach even more residents and making sure that it's an equity question to make sure that we're reaching into every community. In Mattapan, Rosendale, and Dorchester, for the first time ever, this bike share program has been available in all of these different neighborhoods. Uh, it's important that we understand and we continue to share and expand this program to allow people in every single neighborhood in the city of Boston, not just downtown and not just in certain neighborhoods. Now everyone will have access to the blue bikes. In Mattapan, we've installed four new stations, including one at the Mattapan Library, one here in Mattapan Square. This station has 15 bikes, including a unicorn bike. It has a special design by the the young people from the Arts, Artists for Humanity, Humanity, excuse me, that we're going to unveil in a few minutes. We are committed to making sure that transportation is more convenient and safe for everyone. In Mattapan, as I said earlier, we're making investments, improving pedestrian crosswalks, $4 million improvements to Cummings Highway, redesigned intersections of Edgewater Drive and River Street. We're installing protected bike lane paths all across our city. Last year, we added bike lanes to Norfolk Street between Blue Hill Ave in Mattapan and Washington Street in Dorchester. And now we're installing lanes on Columbus Ave in Roxbury in the South End. And we're partnering with the state, with DCR, to extend the Ponset River Greenway, connecting Mattapan, Dorchester, and High Park. And all of this stuff that I'm saying here today, 
all of the, everyone behind me, the elected officials behind me, we're all in this together, making sure we continue to make those connections. We don't, we don't work in silos. We work together. We work to solve a problem. We work to find solutions. And I want to thank them all for their support. As we grow our bike infrastructure in the city, we're going to continue to grow access through blue bikes. We're on track to have 80 additional blue bike stations in Boston by the end of next spring. By the end of next year, we, there'll be 300 stations and 3,000 bikes in the cities of Boston, Cambridge, Brookline, and Somerville. Again, I want to thank all the community members who participated in this process. Whether you attended a meeting, whether you attended an open house, whether you gave feedback online, whether you grabbed me at the Christmas tree lighting, you helped shape the future of transportation in Boston. Whether it was Russell Holmes texting me at night or calling me late at night or Dan Colony, this certainly is worked by you empowering your community. We celebrate you today and we celebrate your neighborhood today. And occasionally we have some anti-bike people out there, but as they see more bikes and as they get that burning desire when they're sitting in traffic maybe, they might decide to pull that car out of a pocket and hop on a blue bike to get to the next destination. So let's encourage them to do that. Thank you very much. So as I mentioned earlier this year, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts came on as our title sponsor and they have really enabled, I'm going to wait for that. Um, so they really enabled this expansion to happen as well as a number of upgrades to our existing fleet of bikes. Um, the bikes are so much better today than they were a year ago. Um, not that they weren't great then, but now they're even better. <laughs> Um, so I, I wanted to thank the various people from Blue Cross who are here today and introduce Pat Gilligan, who is their Executive Vice President of Sales, Marketing, and Product. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie said, uh, my name is Pat Gilligan. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Uh, very happy to be here today. I'd like to thank the mayor for coming uh, and joining us for this celebration. And I want to thank the, all the municipalities, Boston, Cambridge, Brookline, and Somerville, as well as our partner Motivate for all their continued work as we expand the program. When Blue Cross made the decision to support the public bike share program in the municipalities, one of our priorities was to expand the program, especially to communities with limited access where we knew there would be high demand. Together with our Blue Pike partners, we set a goal of adding more than 70 stations in 2018. I'm very happy to report that as of today, we've already added 40 stations, so we are more than halfway there. As the mayor said, we plan to have over 3,000 bikes on these streets by the end of 2019, and we're very excited about that. Blue Cross is a community-focused, tax-paying, not-for-profit healthcare company, and we are committed to helping build healthier communities with the blue bikes. We hope to empower our fellow citizens to live healthy, active lives and support a greener, greener neighborhoods by encouraging sustainable alternative transportation options. Blue Cross is proud to support the Blue Bikes, and since it aligns with our mission to help Massachusetts residents lead healthy lives, it's a great fit for us. Finally, I want to take the opportunity and extend a special thank you to some of the young artists who created the neighborhood bikes with Artists for Humanity. We've met some wonderful community partners who have been very supportive of the work here in Mattapan, and we are grateful for their involvement. The unicorn bike is just fantastic. I got a sneak peek a uh, little before the program, and we're very excited to see it on the streets of Mattapan. We're looking forward to celebrating this new station with the community this evening, as well as the new station in Roslindale Square, which we'll celebrate tomorrow evening. We're excited to see a lot more blue bikes on the streets and the neighborhoods across Boston in the weeks to come. Thank you all for being here. And now we're going to hear from uh, our local partners here. Um, as I said earlier, it's important that as we think about what's happening here in Mattapan, we think about it as a team, all together on the same team moving forward. And we're going to start with uh, Representative Dan Colonnay, Representative Russell Holmes, and then we're going to end uh, with the president of the city council, Andrea Campbell. Thanks, Mayor.
First of all, thank you to everyone that's here today for coming out and supporting. I think what we see with the turnout today that this was a long time coming. And, and I want to give a special shout out to Lee Toma and Vivian Ortiz, two of the best bike ambassadors that we see throughout Mattapan and Milton for all the work that they've done to forward some of these things along. And I just want to say briefly from the state side that, you know, it's exciting to see Blue Cross and, and Mayor Walsh really uh, put the bikes right here. It's so important that they're right here, right next to the bike path, the extension of the Neponset Greenway, nearly $20 million of investment right here in Mattapan to say that we deserve a beautiful bike path. We deserve a beautiful walking path that's right next to the historic trolley and right next to the river with beautiful suspension bridges. And we deserve the greenery that's here, right here in Mattapan Square. And so this is an exciting day. And really, hats off goes out to to the administration, Mayor Walsh's administration for his leadership and Blue Cross Blue Shield because this conversation about when it was Hubway and, and, and then when Blue Cross took it over, it, it was a longer conversation where folks sometimes said, oh, ridership isn't high in Mattapan. And that used to be so infuriating to so many of the cyclists that are here because people that were saying that were literally saying that without the bikes being here yet, without the path being built yet. And so it is so important that as Blue Cross took to us over what was Hubway, they said, no, we're putting the bikes right here, right now. Let's go. Let's give people the option to get off the street and out of their car and enjoy the beautiful neighborhood that they live in. So I want to personally say thank you to Blue Cross, and I want to thank Mayor Marty Walsh and all of our partners in government that have fought for this every step of the way. And, and it's going to be beautiful, not just today at the ceremony, it's going to be beautiful every day when we see so many people using these blue bikes on the path and on our streets to get out of their cars. So thank you very much. Good day, everyone. It is, it is a great day to be here in Mattapan. We want to, of course, extend our thank yous to Blue Cross and to the mayor and the entire team. I want to give another shout out to the other Vivian for Mattapan Food and Fitness, their advocacy and how strong they've been about health. When, when I think about, I grew up here in, literally down the street and I remember that building being an old and dilapidated furniture store. And so when you think about the partnership that the mayor talked about, it is all these pieces that we're bringing together that we knocked down the furniture store, made it, rehabbed it, cleaned up the train station, doing all the improvements that we hope to bring in right here at the new uh, train station that's going to open soon and also the new development. We are doing these things because of the fact that we want our community to really exemplify all the things it really is already. So many folks don't understand who Mattapan is and this is what they do. They drive through it just this quickly every single day, but we want to give those folks even more options. And so I wanted to just say thank you, Blue Cross. Thank you, community members. You guys have been excellent, whether that be advocating for what to do around Forest Hills and the Casey Overpass. This is a partnership. This is a day where we can think about our hope was to hopefully have that building turn one day to a coffee shop with bikes near it so we can go on and go right up to Holden Pond. That's still the desire. We have not forgotten what you said. Turn that thing to a coffee shop that you can get on and go up to Hogan's Pond, go on up to the Blue Hills or go into downtown. So thank you for all the, the I want to say thank you also, sorry, to Gina and Chris. When we were talking about uh, Go Boston, I was the co-chair of the Go Boston initiative as we're looking at transportation around the city. One of my major lenses was equity. And so it's continuing to say not only do we have equity in Go Boston, but to have that then now roll out through all of Go Imagine Boston, equity has to be the lens that we look through. Everybody in this city deserves great transportation, and this is just one path. Thank you, Blue Cross. Thank you very much. Uh, good, morning. good morning. Okay, I live in Mattapan. This is a celebration for Mattapan. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I am Andrea Campbell. I am the president of the Boston City Council. But before that, I'm the district board counselor, and Mattapan is one of my biggest neighborhoods. I live down the street. I could have walked here, but I did drive. Um, next time, I'll take a bike. Um, but I'm, I'm here just to say thank you. I want to say thanks to both of our chiefs as well as the mayor. But also, I want to thank my colleague from the council. Councilor Sabi George is here. Other councilors couldn't be here, but they have been advocating not just for more bikes in these communities and also looking at issues through an equity lens, but also ensuring that our infrastructure that supports the bikes, um, that, that we have funding for that, and that changes quickly. So I want to thank them as well. Um, one thing I am always excited about is when we come into Mattapan, people often talk about our neighborhood through a negative lens. I say that all the time. Those are folks who don't know Mattapan. I love this neighborhood. I love this community. And why? Look around you. 
This is what Mattapan looks like. The advocates, the residents, they show up every single day putting in the work. And guess what? They don't get paid to do this work. They are advocates because they care about this community. They care about the next generation. And I have a one-year-old who lives in Mattapan. They care about him too. So I want to take my hats off and also just say thank you to the advocates. Thank you to the residents of Mattapan for pushing us to be better and do better. Um, and thank you to the mayor. Thank you to the folks in the state delegation. Stephanie, thank you for your hard work. Can we give her a round of applause? Um, our city folks and those employees in the trenches that are doing the work don't often get thanks. So thank you for your hard work. And also thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield for the investment in the partnership. And I'll add, we have more work to do looking at our square economic development. We always talk about it, but today is a day to celebrate. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we're going to unveil a new bike for our fleet. Um, we have worked with Artists for Humanity in the past on a number of extremely beautiful bikes, and I feel like this is going to be my new favorite one. Um, so uh, if the Artists for Humanity team can come up, we actually have the two youth designers with us today, so shout out to them. Um, as well as to their guardians who let them skip school this morning. Um, I'm going to invite Kim Foltz on my team to come up as well. She does actually all the hard work on, on blue bikes. Um, Vivian Ortiz from the community to come on up. All right, I'm gonna hand it back over to the electeds and to this team. Everyone, put a finger on it. Yeah, up and over. Many of these individuals are living with acquired disabilities, though they may not readily identify as having a disability, and they may not realize that their rights are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. Since 1990, the ADA has supported a broad range of individuals to live full, meaningful lives in the community. New England ADA Center works closely with those with rights and those with responsibilities to implement the ADA. For more information, contact us today at newenglandada.org, a project of the Institute for Human-Centered Design.
Each day in America, nearly 10,000 people turn 65 years old. With a population of approximately 15 million, New England lays claim to the largest percentage of baby boomers in the country. Many of these individuals are living with acquired disabilities, though they may not readily identify as having a disability, and they may not realize that their rights are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. Since 1990, the ADA has supported a broad range of individuals to live full, meaningful lives in the community. New England ADA Center works closely with those with rights and those with responsibilities to implement the ADA. For more information, contact us today at newenglandada.org, a project of the Institute for Human-Centered Design.